Hi, it's me again with Corel Draw Tips and Tricks. Kind of finishing up on the menu bar for beginners. We've gone through all the tools of the toolbox. We've gone through all these up here through tools, and now we're at Windows. This is a really useful window. I'm not going to go over the top two sections of tiling your screen and closing windows, refreshing new window. Workspace, default, don't ever really change this too much. I mean, you can change it to a touch or, you know, illustrator type looking page. This is where you're going to be, I'm going to spend the most time on, but we're going to go to toolbars first, which when you click on that, you can close toolbars. Like I closed the menu bars, you can see. Now to get it back, because it's gone, right? So you can right click and get that same menu right up there. So I don't ever go to Windows, I go right here, I right click and I can change those toolbars. Now one thing you can do while we're in the toolbars that you can get to, you can open a little a zoom docker that you can have all your zoom tools. See when you don't, when you have the rectangle tool, you shouldn't have the zoom tools available, but they are because of this. So only when you click on your zoom tool do you get that. It's whatever is in there, whatever like rectangle, I've got a rectangle tool, I can curve it and so on. So those are your uh, tools there under workspace, toolbars, color palettes, and then we're going to go back to dockers. But color palette is where you can click on your palette, double click, and you can change it from RGB to CMYK to, you know, you can even make your own uh, color palettes. But if you click on if you need more colors, you can click on the on that right there and you can have both color palettes. Um, look how many, well, I must have done uh, gray. Uh, let's go back to color palettes, palettes. Yeah, I did 256 shots of gray. So there you can click on there and you can have all these other palette colors, CMYK and RGB colors that are truly a little bit different. Um, You'll find out later on when you're playing around, laser engravers use black, which is a truer black. And then we're gonna do another rectangle with a CMYK black. And if you compare them side by side, let's take away the outline on both of them by left clicking. If you look at them side by side, the RGB is a little bit blacker. So that's why laser engravers like it and wanna use it. So we've gone to Windows, to Palettes, uh, now Dockers. We're going to spend some time here. Dockers are really important. There's all these Dockers in your toolbar, Properties. And what this does, it shows you the property like lines or fill, and you can change transparency. But if you draw a line, we'll just make it, let's make a freehand line. Then that comes up. And because a line is a curve right here in this docker, you can click on that curve and it'll tell you how long that line is. That line is 23.45 inches long. You know, so it measures stuff like that. There's a lot you can do with the docker and outlines and stuff that you can get through from other ways, but let's go to Windows, Dockers, Objects. It's gonna show you the objects in your on your pages. Like here's layer one we have a text that's Corel Draw tips and tricks, a menu, well, let's draw a rectangle, it's gonna add the rectangle. It actually, in later versions, it actually started telling you what the shape is. We'll draw a circle, now we've got a, a polygon, well, that's actually a polygon. I didn't draw an ellipse, that's a polygon with a lot of sides. There's an ellipse, so it tells you. Uh, what you can do in here, you can lock it, you can lock the, uh, Ellipse where you can't, it's like locking it like we went through earlier today or yesterday. So you can lock that ellipse where you can't grab it, but you can always unlock it. You can hide it by that. And um, I don't really ever, you know, that would be if you were sending something to a customer and you didn't want the customer to see it all. There's a lot, and there's a lot of videos to how to do something like that. The next docker is pages, not really a, uh, two important symbols, find and replace, which we've already talked about in 
So some of these are going to be repetitive. Uh, transformation. This is probably one of the coolest dockers there is. You can transform, uh, do a lot with stuff in transformation. We can draw a rectangle and we can rotate it. We can position it. You know, it tells you where it is on the screen. Like right there, it should be at negative 28 because my bed is 28. It's measuring from that edge. You know, you can measure from the center, which is actually what it's doing. But you can make copies uh, and change it, have it move over, make a copy, and it'll, well, I'm putting it right back in the same spot. But you could, uh, you know, have it move over here. You can see the number changes as I change it. So you could have it, you know, if you go, I want that 10 inches up, you could go a negative 10, and it's going to put it two copies of negative 10 up. Uh, the probably the most I use transformation docker for. Yeah, I made a lot of copies. Uh, let's move this out of this. If you're trying to rotate it, and if you remember earlier, I hit the period key and, and put me some indexing lines, if you remember that. If you're going to rotate something, if I hit P and put that in the center of the page, and then grab that X right there and hold down the control button, it'll go perfectly. Instead of using... Um, Control D to rotate this around. If that's in the center, you can pick right here to your rotation docker. And let's do it uh, 10 degrees, and we need 35 of them. We actually need 36, but this is a copy because we already have one. So in that short of time, it rotated it 10 degrees. And, you know, you can put it, anything in there. Um, one thing, a little bit about math. Um, if you don't know how many, you know, like if you wanted 11 degrees or something and you don't know how many copies, uh, you can type in 360 divided by 11. And it's going to rotate it that many degrees, 32 degrees, and it's going to have 11 objects. It, it, it kind of oversees the count. You can skew stuff, which you can uh, do a lot. Sorry about that. I do that a lot. Uh, if you have a, if you draw a perfect rectangle, hold down the control button, would not, and make it a rectangle. You can skew it, uh, just like any other thing. Um, you know, go to fifty percent, and it. No, this isn't the skew. This is the scale. It's gonna. You can do the same thing up here. It made it fifty percent. Um, this is the size. You can change the size. A number of copies. This is the skew, what I was trying to get to right now. Uh, you can change that to two, hit apply, and it. Let me zoom in here. See, I had skewed it 10 degrees or two. I did two. I needed 10 so I could see it. So it skews it. If you want to, you can go negative 10, it'll all go the opposite direction. Of course, it almost got back to equal, so we'll go in negative 25 and it skewed it. That's pretty important when you're trying to skew text all the same and make it italics. It's not italics. Uh, transformation. Yours might say transformation. Later versions, they made it transform. Um, live guideline coordinates, you know, basically just tells you where it is on the screen. You know, whatever box you have. It's, uh, I don't ever really use it, but it would tell you where that's actually at. Let's go back to Docker's uh, align and distribute. Very, very, very helpful to um, make things and, and put things to the left. But we've already gone over that. It's just another tool because it's a another way of doing it. Uh, it gives you a complete thing, everything up to top. But it's a little bit easier because there's left. You know, it puts it to the left. And I actually probably had... Uh, well, it may be left a page picked. So let's undo these and put them to the, now let's go to the right and see it moved it to the right. You can have it go to the edge of the page. And I actually have a, a, a macro that I can use where I put stuff to the top of the left-hand corner of the page. Line and distribute, you know, let's just do it one more time. It, we did it before in that other, in the object manager where you can 
align these, you know, equally apart. Now, this is what I was talking about the other day. Uh, that was from one edge. Uh, this one's from the center. So it's going to line them, space them center, center wise. Transfer, uh, line and distribute is really important. Uh, go back to Docker's. Uh, align and distribute. Fit text to object to path. That's a little more advanced. Step and repeat, which we've already talked about. Here are shapes and join curves and corners. Um, this is uh, really, really cool. If you have a, let's say, a, let's draw a three-sided polygon, which is basically a triangle. In the rectangle tool, you can round those corners, but if you go to Windows, Dockers, and Corners, you can round those corners, and it's actually giving you a preview of what it's going to be before you hit Apply, and you've rounded the corners of anything. Stars, let's just draw a star right quick, and we can round the corner, and that's way too much because the star is little, but we can go like 0.1 and apply. You, it's doing the inside and the outside. You can do just one or the other, or just one particular one at a time. You know, if you just want the top one rounded, you can grab it. Well, let's turn it into a curve. Grab the node and just grab that one and hit apply. It's just, just going to round that one. You can actually just round the insides. So if you select all the inside nodes and round them, and it's a pretty neat uh, optical. You can, you know, that's just rounding them and you can scallop them, chamfer, chamfer them, which just basically gives you flat edges. We need to back up and go to chamfer to chamfer them. And you get some totally different looks. That's way too much. Let's see what else is under dockers. Uh, let's, you can, you can leave your dockers open. I like shutting them, and then I have to open them back up. You know, the shape tool is kind of like the weld tool. It's just a little bit, um, you know, there's some more things you can do because it's got all your intersect boundary. It's got all this, but you can also leave the original or, or, or uh, you know, on this, when you do it with the weld tool, you it just changes it. You could leave the original as it is. Uh, join curves, really, really uh, helpful. If you're drawing, let's just draw something real quick. And let's weld all this together. And if you're going to smart fill that, but if you somehow when you drew it, if you had a little gap, I'm going to right click and break that apart. If you just happen to have a little gap, the smart fill tool is going to leak. That's that's why I always, if I'm going to smart fill something like that, I'm going to fill it in with the smart fill tool and look at it leak to fill up the whole box. It's because that gap right there. Let's take away that real quick. Let's get the zoom tool. Let's measure this gap just to see with the parallel dimension tool. Go from about the center to that. So we're 0 0.01 away from that, which is good. So if we want to close that, close those nodes, select them both with your shape tool, and if you see the point one and put apply, it closed that gap. That's pretty cool when you have a leak. You'll find when you start drawing and you have a bunch of open gaps and uh, you need to find them, that's pretty cool to join the curves. Windows, Dockers. Uh, text is the text docker, font sampler, GIFs, same thing. Effects, we've already talked about. It's, the, it's just your different effects. Um, history, view, uh, tray is a little bit advanced. I've got videos on that. Uh, history is pretty cool. It shows you, you know, in your undo tool, you have a history, but only so far. This goes a lot further. It shows you a lot more of what you've done uh, when you have history if you want to leave that open. And what's good about it, you can go right back to that spot in history. Um, trying to think of something we did. So we created that line. We created that. So we could go all the way down to, see, these are already grayed out because we've gone past there. Or we've, you know, you know edit text. That's how I started out the, the um 
deal. And now once I've gone to the history, it's deleted that history. I think it does that to save space. That's pretty much under Docker, unless I've really forgot something. Uh, most of the stuff is repetitive, but it just kind of gives you a place where everything is at. You know, your most of the ones you're going to use are a property object. In your version, might say op, uh, object manager. Uh, object data, never really done it. Symbols, uh, you can actually make things, and that's, I've got some videos on symbols. Uh, find and replace, which we already talked about. It's the same thing. Basically, the window docker is everything that you ever seen up here. Like here's find and replace. It's the same docker, but it's under window. Now, there are some things in the dockers that you don't have anywhere else. Anyway, I hope that helped just a little bit. Thank you for watching.